So one of my good friends tagged me in this post, what is going on in Alabama? And it would behoove people to know and understand what is going on in these forced birther states. This is going to impact the country because of the way the forced birthers and the Christian fascists are coalescing to strip women of their rights. Alabama case will decide if state can prosecute people who help termination seekers find care. The lawsuit tests the limits of Alabama's strict abortion ban and the power of its outspoken attorney general. They are trying to prosecute women that leave the state to go get termination care in other states. They are looking to restrict women from traveling. So it's like, do you care about that type of thing? I know some people don't care about voting or whatever. Do you care about your right to travel? A federal court judge in Alabama will soon answer the crucial question in a state where termination is illegal. Can health care providers and advocates be punished for helping patients seek the procedure elsewhere? In 2022, just weeks after the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade and the state's memorial ban kicked in, Alabama Attorney General Steve Marshall, a Republican, said on a radio show that groups helping to fund out-of-state termination could face felony charges. His comments rattled healthcare providers who might advise a pregnant woman seeking a termination to travel out of state and funds that help arrange and fund such travel. That advice and support are key, um, Smomortian rights supporters say, because several states across the South have either restricted or banned termination, resulting in a maze of conflicting laws for patients to navigate. So the providers and advocates took Marshall to court, separately suing to block him from making good on the threat of prosecution. No Alabama law authorizes such prosecutions, nor could it. That would be a blatant extraterritorial overreach of state power, the providers lost to states, arguing that Marshall's vow violates the First Amendment, the right to travel, and other constitutional protections. Marshall's office did not respond to a request for comment or address concerns that his reading of the law could make relatives of women seeking termination vulnerable to prosecution. In a filing in August asking the court to dismiss the now consolidated case, his office argued an elective termination performed in Alabama would be a criminal offense. Thus, a conspiracy formed in the state to have that same act performed outside the state is illegal. The plaintiffs who include the Yellow Hammer Fund, a Smomortian Fund, and West Alabama Women's Center, now known as WAWC Healthcare, along with other healthcare providers, have some reason for optimism. In May, U.S. District Judge Myron Thompson of the Middle District of Alabama, who will rule on the case, declined the state's request to dismiss. Alabama can no more restrict people from going to, say, California to engage in what is lawful there than California can restrict people from coming to Alabama to do what is lawful here. If the plaintiffs win, providers and advocates would be able to freely provide information about out-of-state termination options as well as, well as financial support without risk of prosecution. It could also represent a rare victory for termination rights in a state with one of the strictest bans in the country, with an exception only for serious health risks to the patient. Jamila Johnson, an attorney with the Lawyering Project, who is representing the Yellow Hammer Fund, said there are broader consequences if the state is allowed to use anti-conspiracy laws against those who help with travel. Nobody wants to put their doctor at risk, she said. Nobody wants to put their mother or their loved ones at risk or the community groups that they relied on in their neighborhood. So you can see this creates a tremendous amount of silence and people who aren't going to ask for the help that they need. Alabama is not the only state where people who help abortion seekers travel out of state have been called into question. Last year, Idaho banned people from helping minors cross state lines in pursuit of abortion without parental consent. In Texas, a, an anti abortion attorney has argued that a bounty hunter law allowing private citizens to bring civil suits against people who help residents obtain abortion after six weeks could also apply to some abortions performed outside of the state. Legal experts dispute that interpretation of the law. 
Although Marshall has not brought any charges, termination rights advocates say his remarks had had a chilling effect on some abortion funds and healthcare providers. The Yellowhammer Fund paused its assistance because of Marshall's remarks and now focuses on helping people access contraception, mutual aid, and other care. When people call seeking termination, it is now um, it now tells them it cannot provide them funds for termination or refer them elsewhere. Kelsey McLean, the organization's deputy director, told NBC News that's a steep decline from the past when she could come in on a Monday and already have 20 callers in queue. She estimated that previously the group helped between 100 and 200 people per month. For her, turning callers away is personal. More than a decade ago, a termination fund supported her through um, ending a pregnancy. I think such a crucial part of the abortion funding process is hearing from someone that they support you and they want to help you and that your choice is valid and that you deserve love and support through that choice. Advocates say the threats of prosecution compound existing hurdles to reproductive health in Alabama, one of the country's poorest states, where maternal mortality rates exceed the already grim national average. At least three labor and delivery units in the state have closed since the ban kicked in, and another is set to close this month. WAWC Healthcare, another plaintiff in the case, which is being represented by the ACLU, used to offer terminations, but has remained open to provide prenatal care and other repro reproductive health care, such as wellness exams. Robin Marty, the organization's executive director, says the clinic's doctor sees pregnant patients who are often at high risk of complications, but discussions about termination as an option are off the table. Although the state's abortion ban has a health exception, she says it's unclear what falls into that category. There's a fear that even in a medical setting, such interactions could open providers up to prosecution. She hasn't yet let herself picture what the future looks like if the ruling goes in their favor. She's not willing to let her guard down. We were a um, abortion clinic. We are no longer a abortion clinic, but having been a clinic in Alabama, we understand that there are no certainties. She said, adding that the state will continue to find ways to target hers and other groups is one of the reasons why this lawsuit was so necessary. Now, if they are able to restrict women's travel, if they're able to get um, other people's medical records in other states, imagine what that does. You know, for the people that think this is only for a small subset of people, this could really restrict, this could really terminate women's freedoms. I do want to remind us all that Republicans actually blocked access to contraception. They voted to block access to contraception. And this was a couple of months ago. And I'm just reminding us all of that because yes, they want to block terminations. I get that. But they also want to block access to um, contraception when the Democrats um, wanted to put up a bill to protect contraception. Senate Republicans blocked legislation, like I said, this was back in June, that would enshrine a federal right to access contraception, sinking the Democratic-led measure. The vote on the Right to Contraception Act was 51 to 39, falling short of the 60 votes needed to defeat a filibuster and move the bill forward. Republicans said it was unnecessary because the use of birth control is already protected under the Supreme Court precedent. A lot of things have been protected by the Supreme Court until the Supreme Court overturns it. And the way these conservative judges are, no telling what they will come after next, because Roe was protected for five decades. I'm not going to do this whole article. I just wanted to remind us all the way they are chipping away at women's rights left and right. This is not about protecting the unborn, because if that were the case, why don't they um, do things for families as far as the social safety nets that they continue to want to strip? If they actually cared about people, if they actually cared about babies outside of the womb, their actions would show it, their bills would show it, but they don't. The only thing that they care about are fetuses and controlling women. All right, join the conversation. Let me know what you think about Alabama um, and this want, this need to control women's travel. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.